Thank you. Thank you so much, Abdullahi. <clears throat> So first and foremost, I wanted to share our observation as the career team uh, from the week zero, week one, and week two. How have we been seeing the performance in general? I won't say on an individual perspective, because on an individual perspective, you've been receiving feedbacks on your uh, assessments. But in general, here are some of the observations that we have seen and we would love, uh, we would like everyone to really pay attention on them and, um, you know, to listen this carefully. So first and foremost, uh, really the numbers for submission has been amazing. Everyone is trying to attend to the ass assignment as, um, as much as possible. So really congratulations to everyone. And most of the people has been really understanding the assessment very well, responding according to the instructions, according to the rubrics. Everyone has been delivering to the standard. I mean, most of the people has been delivering to the standard that we look for in, in this career assessment. However, we have also the majority which doesn't, you know, I will start by the first point, which is abiding to instructions, abiding to instructions. So for instance, most of the time, our careers um, assessment or responses requires you to submit within a PowerPoint, you know, like your document should be in a PowerPoint and you can upload it as a PPT or even upload it as a PDF, convert it to PDF. But most of the people, you find them doing a um, Word document. Word document, like why? Is it because we are not reading the challenge document carefully for us to understand what is requested into that challenge? Or is it because we're not... Um, some of us are not really valuing the sessions to the standard level that 10 Academy expects them to do so, which is unfortunate. But really, most of the people has not been abiding to instructions that are mentioned in the challenge document. Some of the time I've been asking myself if, um, if it's us, the tutors who has not uh, cleared everything that is expected, the instructions of the assessment, clearly but also by reading the document itself it's mostly uh self-explanatory for everyone to read and know what is expected from that assessment and most of the time we even have the recordings i mean not most of the time all the times we have the recordings that you can go through again and get to understand the challenge very well. Or you can even come to my inbox or even Abdullahi for you to understand what is requested for any small or big question you have, you know. And uh, we've been seeing some people, um, you know, my point number two, some trainees really don't read the previous comments. For instance, there are some people who delivered the assessment responses in one document from what week zero, week one, week two. And we've been mentioning it in their comments that you should be reading the instructions and deliver your responses according to what is expected, to what is required within the assessment. But I believe some people don't read those kind of previous comments, so they keep making the same mistakes. Same to people who design um, PowerPoint designs, but we tell them on how they can improve on the um, on the visibility. Uh, can I call it the visibility? On the appearance of the PowerPoint, you know, by telling you that you should keep the same content size, don't use too many colors, don't use so many visuals in your PowerPoint, like make the content must much more explanatory. Like all those kind of small and big feedbacks we give you in the comments section, we've been seeing people repeating the same mistakes over and over. So really now I advise you to be reading the comments that is provided into, um, you know, under the assessment submission. Really, I advise you to take some time, go there almost every Friday. You should be having some of the feedbacks from your last week or even the current week submissions. Go there, review them so that you ensure that you are really growing through these challenges. You are improving yourself. 
And then uh, number three, respecting deadlines. Respecting deadlines. This is a very huge one. We've been having, let me give you some of the data from the three real world job, um, real world jobs that you would like to take. The challenge, the very first week, week one, yes, week one challenge that we did. Almost all submissions were marked late submissions. Some were submitted on Sundays, others were submitted on Mondays, others were, you know, days past the um, days past the um, the deadline. And why, why why are we doing that? Really, it's a big question. Why, you know? I, I've been trying to understand, but we won't be answering those questions here because this is a general overview. So if you know that you've been missing deadlines, please pay attention. We career sessions, they are not much complicated. It's something you can dedicate three to four hours on your day and you manage to finish it and submit on Saturday, you know, to most of the challenges uh, whose deadlines are on Saturdays. Really, let's pay so much attention to deadlines. So if you know that you've been missing deadlines, you know yourself. This is a feedback to you. Please work on it. Work on it because when we go into the real work environment, missing deadlines is not tolerable at all. At all. So let's be respecting deadlines. Number four, which is also the biggest one, the use of AI content. Chat GPT, Google Bold. We've been seeing people who copy paste everything. Copy paste everything. You know, you are, we are Africans and in most of our countries, English is not our first language. So for me, if you give me a content, I'm able to tell if that is your real English or if that is very robotic. I will give you an example. I've been reading um, some of the recent submissions, actually submissions from the previous, previous week, week two challenges. They're still being submitted now, you know? That's how I'm telling you. It's not like a big thing. So many people are missing deadlines, but some of the people are still submitting with two responses now. Imagine. So I've been mean, even reading some of that that was submitted yesterday. And there is um, you know, the person used so good. The English was very robotic. I don't remember most of the Englishes he used. Um, but there was this word that got stuck with me, you know, about the reflection, about the whole assessment. The person mentioned that uh, the experience made them very feel very flabbergasted. Flabberg I mean, flabbergasted? That's something we need to go into the dictionary for us to search. Like, what do you mean by flabbergasted? And in our normal English, there is a very um how do we call it? synonym word for that kind of word you know in an easy english in our very easy english there is a, a word that that person should have used instead of using that very big english word you know traditional british english so why are we using ai for us to do the challenges we we are not benefiting everything I mean, we are not benefiting anything from uh, using this AI content instead of us thinking and doing our research and doing the challenge as we are supposed to. Really, there is nothing satisfying as seeing your own work developed from scratch to the completion. There is no any other level of satisfaction other than that. So please, Let's let's really have this kind of um, ethic and be honest with ourselves. Ensure that we are doing the work by ourselves, you know? And the very last question, uh, sorry, very last point, it's about the rubrics. So I will give you an example. Let me share my screen. Oh, sorry.
it's about the rubrics. So when we are grading, these marking rubrics are the ones we consider. We don't consider anything else. For instance, for this challenge that I'm going to be sharing shortly, everything around your research and selection of this content is going to be having 20%. So all the times know that if you missed these specific um, topic or specific task in your submission, know that 20% is gone. Know that 20% is gone. I'm talking especially to people who have been uh, raising disputes that they don't understand how they got, that, that it's not fair how they really scored that less in most of the challenges. Know that we are considering this. So take the marking rubric so seriously. Do your work accordingly. Like for this specific challenge, we are going to be considering this. Nothing else. Nothing else. So let's be paying much attention to this. Great. So um, really, thank you so much for show, following all this. And I believe everyone uh, is going to be working on it. If you feel under one of the categories mentioned, please let's work on it. This is our opportunity to grow. It's our opportunity to learn. Of course, it's also an opportunity to make mistakes and be told that we've been made, made mistakes and take initiatives or take responsibility uh, to solve those kind of mistakes and grow from them. Uh, so that is it. Let's go straight into the tutorial for today. Can I have some thumbs up or any questions? Anyone who wants to say something? Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone. Those were our observation. Let's go straight into... Hussein said, is this task a group task? No, it's not. I'm going to be sharing. We are going to be sharing the task, Hussein. We haven't shared the task yet. Okay. Okay. So yeah, now serious faces are gone. Let's go through our challenge. Our challenge for this Tuesday, week three, day two, is about AI in everyday life. Uh, do we take AI? Do we see AI as a supplement to human capacities or human capabilities or as a potential replacement in the future? You know? The challenge is mainly going to be about this. We are going to be exploring the role of artificial intelligence in our daily lives. So uh, some of the people might ask themselves, the previous career contents has been how we get ready to be in a work environment. But let me tell you something very important as well. When we are in a work environment, it's always much more amazing when you are that person who is conversative. Like you know different things about different uh, perspectives in your field, different things in your field. Uh, people are talking about AI and you have an idea. You can share about that idea. You know, it's always very interesting when people find you knowledgeable about specific things in your, in your field. So that's why we are mixing this kind of two different contents. So AI in everyday life, are we go? to some of the recent facts that I've seen first and foremost from the um, um, WHO, World Health Organization, where they were saying that they are uh, working, they are working so hard to have an advanced AI technology that will at least be expected to start diagnosing most of the medical conditions as accurately as human doctors in 2050. That's like 26 years to come. Imagine, like you won't be going to the hospital, uh, sitting on that line and waiting for the doctor or even booking up appointments with the doctor. You will be having to talk to some AI, some, you know, some tech developed thing and we'll be able to diagnose you accurately as a human doctor. So imagine, imagine that 26 years to come, that's a very short time. 
And then by 2030, AI is expected. Um, I've been also reading this from um, New York Times. Uh, how 20, by 2030, AI is predicted to be contributing up to 15.7 trillion to the global economy. Imagine that those are some of the points that really made me feel like, hey, like seriously, like this is where we are going. I'll be sharing the links for you to, to read more about these two points, but they will. Hello, can you hear me? I kind of lost my network. Okay. Okay, all right. Thanks, Rudolph. So before I continue, can some of some of you also tell me uh, what are some of the crazy AI facts that you've recently come to know? crazy AI facts or interesting ones, anyone who wants to share. Hello. Something interesting that you've been reading. Okay, Yvonne. Uh, so one fact that I came to learn about AI and that is interesting is that you can be sued because of what your AI does. For example, if it gives wrong information to someone, that person can sue the company behind the AI because of that. Or if it breaches, if there is a data breach, breach because of a certain system, a company can be sued because of that. And it's because of, okay, it's not because it won't directly be because of that person, but it will be because of what their system has done, what, what the AI system has done. Wow, that's interesting. Good, okay. Thanks for sharing, Yvonne. Anyone else, one last person? One last person. This is our field. It's our field, so we should be really having some information about it. Anyone? Anyone? Okay, I continue because actually the challenge is going to be just about us informing ourselves on these tasks. Uh, Hussein said, the above human performance on specific tasks such as human language this this course video understanding and agents hussein do you want to open your mic and share more about the points you shared oh okay all right all right um let's continue so when we hear those kind of interest facts about artificial intelligence, now the question remains are, how can we develop a balanced perspective on the significance of AI in our daily lives? And also how can we explore the idea of AI as a supplement to human capabilities, not a replacement? Because um, human has, we have the kind of superpowers which I don't believe AI can be able to overcompete, really. But how do we prove this? You know, how how, how do we get to explore uh, the idea? You know, that AI is going to be a supplement to human capabilities, and not a complete replacement. In so many ways, how? It's what we are going to be actually exploring in this challenge, you know, because AI is everywhere 
and it enhances the convenience and efficiency, but also raises important questions about its impact. For instance, I've been talking about people who are using ChatGPT or Google Bolt to submit their uh, to submit their challenges. How does that impact us as humans? It reduces our capacity of thinking. First and foremost, it reduces our capacity of thinking because most of the time you won't be wanting to trouble yourself with thinking about that kind of challenge, thinking about the responses. You won't take it as an exam. You won't take it as a challenge. You will be like, oh, I have, I have this tool that can do it for me in an instance. Then you go there, do your work, and you are done. You know, those are most of the important questions that AI raises. It's going to impact us, impact our thinking capability. And if we are dev or growing in that kind of descending way, in a negative way, how will the world look like in years to come? Those are the questions that it imposes. So the task of a few, the task that we are going to be having in this challenge, we are going to be working on an exercise that consists of four tasks. It's designed to deepen your understanding of AI. You will have to select and investigate a specific AI application that you find interesting or relevant in your life. Any, any, any AI application that you find interesting in your daily life. And then through the research, you will be analyzing and doing a reflection and doing an examination of how the AI works, its impact and ethical considerations, and any kind of rooms of improvement that you believe should be on that specific AI development. Let's go through the challenge to understand the tasks specifically. I hope you can see my document. Can you see my screen? Okay, great. Not sure why my network is cutting itself. I'm always receiving a notification that I lost network, but it's okay if you can hear me. So let's go through it. You will read more about the background. It's actually what I also explained before. Let's dive into the exercise. Task one, you are going to research and pick one AI application that you find interesting or relevant in your life. And then you get to explain why you chose it and explain why you find it relevant. Like the task is for you to choose one that is interesting or what that is relevant in your daily life. And then you get to also explain why, why, why is it interesting to you or why is it relevant in your daily life? Or even what do you find interesting with that AI specifically? And then task two, you are going to be understanding how it works, the functionality. Number one task is to describe in details how that AI application functions, explain the input required, the process of how the process it goes through to deliver the output it generates. You know, so the first task you will be just talking about the name of the AI and why you chose it. Then second, try to explain to us how that AI works. What are the inputs it requires, the process it goes through, and the output it generates. I'm telling you, I, I hope you don't find this as a more technical kind of uh, challenge. It's not because I've tried the challenge myself and I've been able to find all the information I needed on the specific AI that I chose myself. So you are also going to be able to find all this. And also from your personal experience with interacting with it, you should be knowing exactly uh, the kind of outputs it delivers. And then from there, you can search the input and the process you go through to deliver those specific outputs. 
I hope it's clear. And then B, you are going to be describing how often you use that AI application in your, in your daily life. Include specific examples of situations or tasks where you rely on it. I believe this is self-explanatory. The number C, describe the positive aspects of using that AI application. Discuss how it has improved your efficiency or your convenience or your overall experience in the tasks it assists you with. You know, for instance, uh, to people who use iPhone, we know Siri. We know Siri it can be one of the voice of our AI applications. And in my example, I use Siri most of the time when, for instance, I'm driving and I need to find something or I need to call someone immediately, even though being on a phone while driving is not okay. But I'm giving you an easy example to understand. So I just call, say, hey, Siri, can you do this and this for me on my phone? And it will be able to do it. So you are going to also be giving out examples of how um, to this be, you're going to be giving examples or situations or tasks where you rely on that kind of specific AI application. And then here, you discuss how it improved your efficiency or your overall experience in a certain tasks where you require its assistance. The number D, you are going to be identifying and discuss any challenges or limitations you have encountered while using your AI application. This could include instances where it may not provide accurate results, for instance, or where it can misunderstand your requests, or if it has privacy concerns, like you've been sharing most of the information uh, about yourself or about what you do or about what you are working on, but um, in terms of, of on, um, you know, terms and condition or privacy uh, conditions, you don't find anything that cons that anything that um, that convinces you that they will be keeping the privacy of your conversation with that kind of air application. You are just going to be discussing its limitations or the challenges you encounter while using it. That's specifically task number two. And then task number three, you are going to be, we are going to be talking about the societal impact and ethical considerations. Number A, for instance, consider the broader societal impact of that AI application, because I'm pretty sure it benefits a mass population. Then you discuss on whether it has changed how people interact or perform certain tasks in society. And also, are there any potential societal implications? Then number B, we are going to be reflecting on the ethical aspects of air application use. Are there any ethical dilemmas or concerns related to privacy, bias, fairness associated with it? It comes in so many different shapes. This question about the ethical aspects, it comes, I, I just gave out a few examples, you know, any concerns related to privacy, fairness associated with it, or even bias that it has. But there are so many other examples that you can find here. So find them, talk about them in task three. Then task four, it's about uh, reflection. So based on your research and analysis and your personal experience with your chosen AI application, Provide a clear and well-supported statement on whether you view it as a supplement to human tasks or a potential replacement in the upcoming years. Just fire your perspective with examples and insights gathered throughout the exercise. Test number four is just about reflection. Just tell us what you think. What's your conclusion? Do you find it as a supplement to human capacity or a potential replacement in the next 30, 50, or a decade to come. What's your conclusion? You know, and then in this research, if there is anything that you can back up with data or references, ensure, ensure to tag those kind of um, 
reference that we can go there and read more about it. Submission, uh, you are going to be creating a, a PowerPoint of maximum eight slides responding to all of the above tasks. Support, uh, as always, reach out to me or even Abdullahi on Slack, or you can even ask her to jump on a call, on a Google Meet call, if you require more clarifications about the challenge. Then why do we find this kind, this specific topic interesting? You know, we want to develop an understanding that AI impact in every, the, the understanding of AI's impact of on everyday life and encourage the critical thinking about its role as a tool to supplement human capabilities rather than replace them. This is the whole purpose. Then by reflecting on a specific AI application, you will get to gain insights into its benefits and limitations and fostering a balanced perspectives on that specific AI role in the society. Here are the marking rubrics. When we are grading, we are going to be focusing on these specific four things. Research and selection. We want to understand the chosen AI application is, if the chosen AI application is highly relevant to provide more information you need for this specific exercise. Um, you will get to provide the clear and detailed description and clearly explain why that AI application was chosen, demonstrating the thoughtful consideration. We want to understand this. Why did you choose this? Just tell, give us facts, give us facts. Then number two, about understanding how it works. It's task number two. It's going to be graded on 40%. We want to understand if you absolutely understand its functionality. And if you gave out clear and easy to understand examples and discuss them in a wider range um, for us to understand specifically. Like if you're explaining to someone who has never used it before, can, be, can they be able to understand how and when they can need to use that specific AI as well in their lives? Then number three, it's about societal impacts. It's going to be about 20%. And then also to reflection is going to be about 20%. So that is it about the challenge for this week. The first challenge. Yes, Birahan. Come again, Birahan. And ask for the red line. Oh, the red line is Saturday. The red line is Saturday, 6th January, 8 p.m. UTC, as always. Okay, any other question? Any other question, or is the task easy to understand? Yes, AIA. Yeah. Uh, good morning, Pascalin, uh, or afternoon. Uh, I'm just wondering about the number of slides that you are mentioning. Uh, during the past two weeks, uh, in the first week, I tried to uh, put more information. And then uh, after I read the uh, comments, uh, on the <clears throat> those tech stack for remote uh, job. On those, uh, I try to be more, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, it, 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 it wasn't possible to put all the steps that we need to follow, for example, on the notion in one slide. So I only prepared the, the, the six slides in a precise manner, I, I, I believe. Uh, I know there is no more information on that, but uh, if we have to put or explicitly do those uh, mentioned tasks, we need more slides. That's why I, I, I couldn't include more than uh, six slides. So is it possible to just I mean, I'll limit the, 
uh, number of slides on a specific task. I don't know how it's gonna. Yeah, uh, it's 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 been difficult for me to put what I thought about some specific task. Thank you. Okay. So uh, thank you for raising that area. One of the main purpose of us strictly sending uh, the maximum slides that you have to follow is because in most of the presentation or projects, um, presentations or anything that you will be presenting, it's always good to limit your kind of slides. Like how do you convey big information, but in a very short and easy to go through document that everyone will have to go through it and they don't get tired of reading. So imagine we don't set the limit and someone does uh, a 20 slide document. Like really, it doesn't say uh, like, like why, why 20 slides? Unless it's a whole kind of, uh, you know, annual report probably you are in a certain company and your report, so you have to report about so many things. But we set strictly different slides according to how we expect everything to be looking in the, um, in the PowerPoints. I will share something here. For instance, on this task number two. No. I'll give you an example. On task number two, how it works, the functionality, we set three to four maximum slides. Why? The task number one is to describe in detail how that AI application functions. You know, the input it requires, the process it go through, the output it generates. So you just have to go read more about this, find out, uh, write it probably in your drafts, and then have a way to summarize your responses about all these three in a way that it can fit on one slide because it's about explaining. Then number two, describe how often you use this AI application in your life. Specific examples. This doesn't need more discussions. You know, you can explain it in a very summarized way that someone will get your message without you putting the whole the de definition of how you use it, you know. Like, I gave an, an example of Siri. I can say that I use it, um, uh, how can I say that I use it specifically for Siri as an example? So I can, like the example I gave, while driving and I need more information and I, I cannot touch my phone. I need more information from my phone. So I just talk to it so that it can do the task for me on my phone. That's an example. I talk to it, it does the task for me on my phone specifically. I don't have to go through, oh, I just call it and it responds like in details. This is something that you can put on half of the slides. And then number three, describe the positive aspects. Describe the positive, describe. And then it has discuss. So this will definitely take a slide or even a slide and a half. And then number four, it says identify and discuss. This will probably take a whole slide. And for you to also, uh, if you find that you have a lot of contents to share and you feel like they are very important to not be left out, so then you get to reduce your uh, character size. For instance, here I have my characters in 13, but if they, if I was supposed to be having this challenge in just two, in just two pages, not three, I will have to reduce the characters of my size so that they can fit into three. Let me show you. You know, I've reduced the, the um, I've reduced the contents of my challenge from 13 to everything to be on 11 they are still visible easy to read but they are on two pages and just a quarter of the third page and still strictly i have to put it on uh let's say i i have to put it on just two pages strictly so we still come and reduce it to 10 so that it fits to two pages it's easy or even reduce this kind of distances i have in here 
it all just depends on how the message you want to deliver and also the kind of design you use in your application in your PowerPoints. When my example is clear, AI, I'm not sure if I really am. Yeah, not... I know it, it's clear. Uh, you know, the, the, I mean, changing a font size by itself uh, is not a good way. I mean, there, there should there, there is a standard for the the font size, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Then diminishing it or uh, increasing it. Uh, will not be a good idea. Instead, we stick to um, uh, a standard font size for a presentation or for a slide. And then, uh, yeah, but I understand your, uh, your, your concept. Uh, yeah, we have to uh, be concise about presenting our ideas. Uh, that's, that's the objective of the limiting the number of slides. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, about the character size, don't diminish them to a point where it's not visible. Diminish them to a point where it's visible, easy to read, and very organized. I'm pretty sure we'll be able to go through it. That's much better than developing kind of a very large document that, you know, is, is so hard to go through. Okay. 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 Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for asking that question. We will actually be considering uh, reviewing it, even in the next challenges. See what we can do better about that. Thank you. Any other question? Okay, if there are no questions, can I have some thumbs up or comments in the chat box on if everything is clear? Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much. All right, see you shortly into our CBS session on Slack. I believe from the leaderboard, we've been seeing that our community interactions or, um, you know, everything is always looked out for um can i say looked out for everything is considered your performance and everything is considered so let's be joining the community uh bonding session so that we get to bond we get to relax we get to unwind and get to have fun together get to keep knowing each other better yes abraham uh, good afternoon uh, so what are the total number of slides uh, that are expected? I'm sorry. Eight, eight, eight slides. They are mentioned here. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah. It's mentioned here under the submission part. Okay, thank you. Mm. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay, have a good day. Uh, let's meet in 10 minutes on Slack. Thank you. Bye for now. <laughs>